Hey everybody, Nick here, and today I got a review for you of this little guy. This is the Feather Raises All Stainless ASD2. Um, first off, though, I want to thank very much my Patreon patrons who make it possible for me to randomly pick up a, a higher-end uh, double-edged razor and say, huh, is this worth doing? Um, because I think that's uh, it's something that a lot of folks have been asking for, more double-edged razor reviews, and, uh, you know, it's always an interesting question, right? So, um, thank you very much, patrons. You make the channel possible. Next thing, let's do some size comparison real quick. Um, here it is against the uh, Mercur... Uh, um, uh, oh, what, the, what the heck is this guy called? The 23C. There you go. Snappy little name. So you can see here that it is actually a little bit shorter in the handle than the 23C, and although overall about the same size here... Um, here it is against a standard uh, ruler, so you can get a good sense of the, uh, the, the the overall size here. And, of course, as is tradition for the channel, the Spydeco Delica. So, yeah, this is uh, not a very large razor, but at the same time, it's a longer handle there. Um, so there you go. Next thing, this is a double-edged razor. That means it takes a, a, a double-edged razor blade. Um, for those of you who are unfamiliar with the process, and by the way, this is not the razor rusting. This is a little bit of rustification from a, another blade that got a little rusty in there. But but for those of you unfamiliar, Ray, a, a double-edged razor takes a double-edged razor blade like these. That's right. You may have seen these around your grandpa's house. But the thing is, this is a really, really, really good technology. If you have been shaving with a Mach 2 or Mach 10 or whatever they're up to now, one of the 15-bladed razors, you are doing it wrong. Um, and I don't say that because you're dumb or anything. It's just marketers have realized that they can sell you very expensive blades. This is like a 25-cent blade, and you can get three weeks out of this guy. Yeah, that's reason number one why a double-edged razor is, frankly, just better. You also get better shaves. You get fewer ingrown hairs, less acne. This is just a... If you are not shaving with a double-edged razor and you are a human who needs to shave, then you are doing it precisely wrong. Um, straight razors are good, too, but that's a little more involved. So if you are looking at this and going, I've never even seen a razor like this, see a razor like this. Seriously, you can get them. This is like 27 bucks, and you will save so much freaking money, it's, it's obscene. But Anyway, so that's a double-edged razor. You should be shaving with a double-edged razor if you're not. I have a whole video on why you should be. Um, but yeah, there you go. This, however, is a higher-end piece. For all of you who are going to shout, you bourgeois bastard, when I come to it later, this is $165. But the big question here is, is this worth doing? Um, and I've actually spent a lot of time with it. I've had this guy for about four months, and I've shaved with it pretty much every time I've shaved um, during that time. So I'll be able to, well, maybe not every time, but still. Um, and so I'll, I've got a fair amount to say here. So I uh, will go on ahead and talk about what's good about this guy and what's not so good about this guy, and we'll talk at the end about whether it's worth the money. So on the good side, to start with, it comes with a pack of feather blades. Now, as many of you may know, different straight or uh, double-edged blades are made by different companies have different characteristics. They are made to varying levels of sharpness with different steels and things like that. Um, for me personally, feather blades, feather just like the thing that falls off a bird, is the, the, the answer. They are the sharpest. Oh my God, are they sharp? It may not be the best thing to start with because they are a little unforgiving, but once you get used to them and once you're good at the process, oh my god are they good. I have thicker hair than some and feather blades just cruise right through them. So the fact that it comes with a pack of the very best kind of razor blade out there in my estimation is absolutely a beautiful thing. Next thing, this guy has a long handle. There were a lot of uh, razors out there that have a relatively short handle off the bottom of it there. I honestly don't know why. Um, every time I shave with a short handle razor, I just feel like, wow, I kind of wish I had a longer handle on this guy. It just gives you a little bit more power to control things. Um, some people may disagree. You're welcome to, but I really do appreciate a long handle and generally recommend that for people who are just getting into the game. Next thing, the handle on this guy is solid. Um, and I don't mean that in the sense of it is a, well, I mean, it is solid in the durable sense, but it is also a continuous chunk of metal. And it is not a hollow, as opposed to something like this on this uh, Mercur here, which is, sorry, a little dirty. Um, just took it out of my travel kit, right? Um, but anyways, it is a very different, uh, it's a very different sort of feeling, having a, a hollow handle versus a solid one, and I appreciate the fact that you're not getting water all up in there, etc. So, that's a nice thing. Next thing, this is a solid steel razor. Um, the entire thing is a stainless steel, and that's nice, because um, I've had it in the past. Does this one have any of it? Yeah, right here. 
on this Moco here, and I don't mean to beat this up. This is one of the very best cheapy, well, cheapy, uh, less expensive razors out there. But you can see here that the plating has actually kind of fallen off in places, uh, revealing the metal underneath there um, after dropping it or something like that. Uh, whereas this guy shouldn't have that issue because it is just a continuous chunk of steel. Um, and so it also has a very nice surface finish to it. It's just, it's it feels substantially nicer than a lot of the plated sorts of razors out there in the world. So that's good. Next thing, this has very easy cleanup. What I mean by that is that you can see here that there is the, uh, so right here you've got the edge. The, the, the razor's edge is, is sticking down there. And then underneath there, you've got a nice little trough here. And that trough will capture all of the uh, beard particles, so to speak, as well as the shaving cream and direct it all out the bottom. And in my experience, this is a very easy razor to clean up. You can just kind of wash it under the uh, uh, under running water there or uh, dip it in the sink if that's your approach. Um, it, it, it doesn't hold on to beardos. That's the technical term, of course, for the particles there uh, it, very effectively. So uh, that, that that's great. There are some razors that are definitely a pain in the neck to get, that, to get the material out of there. This one isn't that. So that's good. Next thing, this is not an adjustable razor. Now, I know what you're thinking. Well, Nick, come on. Isn't adjustability a feature? Yes and no. For some people, it can be a joy. And if you really enjoy playing with your shave, trying a bunch of different things, um, then an adjustable can be kind of fun. But the thing is, in practice, at least for me, I tend to prefer a razor that is exactly the way I like it and stays that way. You don't have to worry about when you're putting the, the, the razor back together or anything like that, anything, you know, oh, do I have it set exactly where it was? Am I going to have an unexpectedly aggressive Razor? No, it just works. It's sort of the Apple approach of like, you know, find the setting that works for a lot of people, make that the only thing you can do. Um, and so I, I like that approach. Next thing. Um, this is a weird little detail, but um, on many razors, um, particularly like on this Merkur here, you can see there's an area of the edge of the razor blade itself sticking out. This is not sharp, but it is a little bit on the sharp side. I mean, it, it's not like sharp end, I suppose is the way to put it. But as a result, though, um, you end up with this little area here, which is uh, unexpectedly sharp and not super ergonomic. Whereas on this guy, the uh, entirety of the razor blade is hidden up underneath there. Um, this does mean you're a little bit further away away from the edge of the razor uh, at times if you're trying to get super close, but it's not generally a problem. And ergonomically, it can occasionally be nice to be able to grab it like that without any of that pain, so that's good. Next thing, this has a small head on it. Um, I have shown razors before on the channel, and I've sold those razors, um, like the uh, Mercure, Futur, and a couple of others, I think, that, that have very, very large uh, heads. They've got a lot of material up above here. they got a lot of material sticking out to the side there. And this is fine, except when you actually have to shave around something. If you're shaving, for instance, right up, if you're shaving your upper lip, coming right up toward the nose, it's very easy to start missing those little hairs um, when you've got a very big head on this, whereas with this guy, I can get right up in there and uh, nip those guys out. Um, that's a great thing. I like very much having a smaller head on the razor, um, and it's something I've, I've come to really appreciate. So I appreciate how low profile this is, both in this way as well as in this way, and that's great. Then finally, on the good side, this has a very nice balance of aggression and safety. Some people People talk about this as being a relatively mild shave, and in some ways it is. Um, it's a shave that's not uh, very irritating. Um, but the thing is, I find it still gets super close, and it really is well suited to the feather blades, um, because it's relying on the sharpness of the blade to allow you to just get in there and pull out those hairs. Um, I can see if you were using this guy with very with relatively dull blades, if you were doing like Mercur or Astra or something like that. I think Astra is pretty dull. It's been so long since I used anything not feather. Um, but anyways, um, this is really well suited to the feather blades because it relies on the blade to do the cutting. But the rest of the time, it's actually very mild. So it's a, a razor that gets as close as I need it to. This is very aggressive from some perspectives, um, but it's not going to mess you up. I've had razors that are like, especially some of the adjustable razors, where it's like, I'm going to cut you. Like, the, the, the razor is just sitting there with a big old freaking knife, like, I'm going to cut you, I'm going to cut you. And then what you're doing is you're doing your best not to let that razor do that to you, right? Um, and so I appreciate very much that this razor has a little bit more restraint. It, it definitely is aggressive enough, but it's also relatively, it's good for sensitive skin. So I appreciate all of that. That's the good. It's got a good balance of aggression and safety. It's got a relatively small head. It contains the razor entirely within the head. It is uh, not adjustable, which is actually a beautiful thing. Um, it has easy cleanup, solid steel, a solid handle, and a, um, a long handle, and it comes complete with a pack of the uh, feather blades. So on the bad side, a couple of things to highlight here. Um, one thing that I will actually, oh, I forgot to mention this guy, um, as I was doing this, just a second here... 
One nice uh, feature of some razors, and this is one of them, uh, is that you can actually uh, put it on backwards, and this will protect the blade during travel. This one's a little bit more exposed than some, um, but this gives you another option. I should have mentioned that. It's sort of a neutral thing, but it's nice to see on occasion. So, um, anyways, on the bad side, a couple of things. Like I said, um, this is not adjustable. Now, like I said, for me, I think that's a pro, uh, pro but for some people, if you like to mess around with your shave, that's going to be a con. Consider, you know, consider your audience, etc. Um, next thing, if you do want something that is crazy aggressive, if you like shaving with a razor that's like, I'm going to cut you, then honestly, this isn't the choice. Although, honestly, if you're liking that level of aggression, you should get a straight razor because then you can make it as aggressive and not as, as you'd like and, and you, you'll get it sharper too. I mean, uh, honestly, I, I'm a big advocate of straight razor shaving except when I have to get up really, really early in the morning um, and I often do, in which case, generally half awake, this is a better choice. But if you want Rambo aggressive, this ain't the right choice. Next thing, this guy's a little back heavy. What I mean by that is that the balance on this guy is a little further back here, and that's partly because it's got this solid stainless handle, and the razor itself is relatively heavy. And so, um, although that can be nice and that it helps to kind of pull the razor down, because you're really not going to be pushing much, it's just kind of like, eh. but it's still a little bit back heavy. I like a little bit more head heavy on my razors. And then finally, on the bad side, um, it is super expensive. It's 165 bucks. That's a lot of freaking money. And in fact, that kind of ends up being the defining issue issue of this razor here. So um, to me, all of that is what's bad here. It's super expensive. It's a little back heavy. If you want super aggression, this ain't the choice and it's not adjustable. Honestly, not that much bad here. But we get into the final conclusion here. This is the best razor I've ever used, I think. Um, that's kind of a strange thing to say, like a superlative that I'm not 100% sure about. But I know it is a very, very good razor. It's a beautiful balance of aggression and smoothness. It's beautifully made. And aside from the weight and the price, it's honestly hard to argue with. So at some level, it should be an easy gem, right? But actually, I think this is a case study in the curve of diminishing returns. You know, I've talked before on the channel about, hold on just a second, let me get a piece of paper, about the curve of diminishing returns. This is the idea that Basically, as you are buying something on the very low end here, yeah, this is this is money on this axis here, and this is good on this end. So on the very low end, when you move from the cheapest thing ever to something even a little bit more expensive, you can make a huge improvement. And then as you start to spend more and more money, after a while, that starts to flatten off a little bit. Because, you know, the jump between a super, super cheap, you know, AliExpress double-edged razor and then one of these guys can be absolutely huge. But then if you spend 10 bucks, that gets you less improvement up here than it does down here. And so this is the curve of diminishing returns. It is a well-known thing in the gear world. And so spending 10 bucks more brings a bigger improvement at the bottom end than it does at the top end. And there comes a point where as you spend more and more money, you're really not getting all that much in the way of improvement. And I think this illustrates it nicely. This is way up the curve of diminishing returns for double-edged razors. This uh, razor is better 100% than the Mercur 23C. If somebody said, Nick, I'm switching your Mercur for this guy, all of them will disappear and become this. Like, yeah, great. I'm, I'm totally in. Great. Um, this guy is a little bit better. It's, I don't want to say more aggressive. I mean, I guess it is a little more aggressive. Um, it's got a smaller head in terms of, it's just better machined overall. I just, I like this, uh, the feather substantially more than the Mercur. It is well worth an upgrade from the Mercur. It's also better than the Mercur Future, but that wasn't a razor I particularly loved, but it's simpler. It's a smaller head. It's just better. Um, and I think it's also a little better than the Mercur Slant Razor in, in production. So uh, generally, a lot of the ones that I recommend, and I I got a review of the Mercur Slant coming up here soon. Um, but nevertheless, that's that's a thing. Um, the closest competitor to this guy is actually this razor right here. This is the Razor Rock Razor's Game Changer. Um, very different razor in a lot of ways, and this has the super neural body because they sell different ones. Um, in a lot of ways, these are uh, these feel similar. This is a little bit more aggressive, but it's also a very, very nice razor. Um, I like the feather just a little tiny bit more. I, the, 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 the feather is just a bit better, and if you said to me, Nick, you can only keep one. I think I'm keeping the the, the, the feather here. Um, there's a problem, though. Um, I like the feather just a little bit more than I like the Razor Rock. This is $53. This is $165. So what that means, if I like this just a little bit more and this is three times the price, we are way up the curve of diminishing returns. And what that means is that even though I think this might be my very favorite razor, 
it's probably not a gem. It's probably not a razor I'm going to send most people to. It is really, really, really good, but you can get really, really good for like a third of the price. And I'll do a full review of this guy here at a certain point. I want to spend a little bit more time with it to make sure. Um, but so my final conclusion is this is a great razor. And if money is no object or you really want that balance of sensitivity and aggression, um, that's a God, this is so weird to talk about. Um, then this is something you might consider. Um, but I think that for most, you can get a, uh, a shave that is almost as good and shave a whole bunch of money in the process by going a different direction. So anyways, there you go. I hope this has been interesting to you and have yourselves just an absolutely wonderful rest of your day. Bye now.